So on this welcome screen at the minute, we're forcing users to enter in their name and we're not allowing them into a chat if they don't enter a name, if they try to get this error message. However, if a user was to go directly to forward slash chat, then they do get into this component. Now, we don't really want that because then when they're chatting, they don't have a name associated with that chat. So what we'd like to do is block this component or this URL if that name property doesn't exist. Now, when we're blocking a certain component or URL in view, we can use what's known as a route guard. So a route guard guards the route. We can check something before that route is loaded in. And if it's true, then we can go ahead and load that route, that component. If it's false, if we're not happy with what we're seeing, then we can redirect them somewhere else. So we're going to create a route guard in this video so that if a user comes to this component at forward slash chat and that name property is non-existent, then what we'll do is redirect them to the welcome screen so that they can never actually get onto that chat component without that name existing. OK, so how do we set up this route guard? Well, since this is to do with routes, we'll open up our routes file. And this is the route that we want to attach a route guard to. Now, there's several different types of route guard. We'll look at some different ones later on. But the one I'd like to show you in this video is called before enter. That is before this route enters or before this component is loaded, if you like. So after this, we'll place a comma and we'll do a before enter route guard. Now, this here is going to be a function and it's an arrow function. So that's parenthesis, arrow, and then curly braces. So this before enter function, it takes in three parameters, to, from, and next. So to is information about the route that we're going to, the component that we're going to. From is about where we've come from. And next is a function that we're going to use to call where we want to go to next. We'll learn about that in a second. Before we actually enter the chat route and load the chat component, what do we want to do? Well, we want to see what's on the parameters that are passed through to this thing right here. Because remember, inside our welcome screen right here, when we redirect them, we're putting on a parameter which has a name property. So we want to check that that parameter actually exists before we load up the chat component. So how do we do that? Well, since we're passing the parameter or the prop to the chat component, that parameter should be present on here. So we can check if it is present on there. If it is present, then we can still load up that chat component. If it's not present, then instead we'll force them to redirect to the welcome screen so they do enter in a name. So let's just have a look at this first of all. We'll say console.log and we're going to log to.params.name. So now if we save this, this function right here is going to fire just before the chat component is loaded and it's going to look for this parameter on the to component, which is the chat component, and it's going to look for a property called name on there and log it to the console. So now if we go here and we say Mario, and in fact, I'll open up the console ready so we can see this. OK, if we press enter chat, then we should see Mario load in. Now, it didn't actually load up that next component, the chat component. And that's because we've not called next here. We're running this function and we're never telling for you to say, OK, well, now next, I want you to redirect to whatever component. Now, if we call next on its own like that, all it's going to do is take us to the next component, which is the chat component, right? So let's save it and we'll view this again. I'll try saying Mario again. We should still see it logged to the console over here, but this time it does take us to the next component as well. So we can see Mario right here. Now, if I was to go to forward slash chat directly without entering in a name, then we'll go to that and we get undefined right here because we don't have a name property inside this component anymore. It's not on that params object. So what we could do is in that route guard detect whether a name exists. If it does exist, yeah, we'll let them into this component. If it doesn't exist like this, then we'll redirect them to the home page or the welcome screen rather. So let's perform that check. We'll say if, and then we want to check the to component dot params dot name. So if that exists, because if it's undefined, it will be false. So if it exists, then we'll say, okay, 
go to the next component. You can see the chat screen. If it doesn't exist, we want to redirect them to the home page. So again, we can say next, but now we're not going to just the next component that we've asked for, we're going to the home page. So we need to pass in an object here and say that we want to go to the welcome component right here, the welcome route. So we'll say the name of the route we want to go to is welcome, like so. So does that make sense? If this exists, this name, we're going to the next component that we've asked for, because we've already asked for that, we're saying forward slash chat here. If it doesn't exist, then we're calling next, but we're not just going to the next component we've asked for, we're going to this component right here that we've passed into the next function. So if I save this now, this should hopefully redirect us if we don't add in a name. So I'll go to forward slash chat, and you notice I can't get there. It automatically redirects us here before that chat component even loads in, so we don't even see it for a millisecond. So that's good. We've guarded that chat route now to make sure the name property exists. However, if I do add a name here, Mario, and then try to go to chat, I can see it. So I can get here when a name does exist, but not when a name doesn't. That's pretty awesome.